One time, the calamities and the repentance work together. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because if we remember very well with the parasha from Noah, it took a very long time for Elohim to destroy the world. Yeah. Before he told uh, Noah to build the ark, the people were very wicked. And Yeshua reminded us that as it was in the time of Noah, so will be in the last days. Mm. So we are in the same time. People are so busy with building, buying, marrying, playing, having fun, that they neglect the most, the most, the most, the most important things, which is the life before the King of the Universe. So today. Because of the mercy of Elohim, the calamities come and the plague comes through Yeshua with a filter. He filters the anger and the mercy. He filters the anger and the mercy. So, if you have like a, a tree, you have the middle pillar, which is Mashiach. Mm -hmm. On the right side, you have the reset, which is the mercy of Elohim. On the left side, you have the givura, which is the judgment. Mm -hmm. Today, judgment and mercy come together through the middle pillar. And this middle pillar is Yeshua. So this is why the calamities are tempered. They don't come in full power. Mm -hmm. until, until the day there will be a change and Mashiach will not be able, will, will not be there to filter. So the anger of Elohim will come directly to the earth and then we will have these uh, last plagues which will bring destruction. For the whole world? For the whole world. Nation will be punished. Idolatry will be punished. So people think that there are countries who are not punished now and are not affected. There is different reason for that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't have always answer, but there is different reason. What I, what I found out is that the country which has been heavily affected by uh, by catastrophe are countries, not always, but many times, where the Roman Catholic Church had a great influence. Mm -hmm. And not not only so, but if we seek in this country we will find a lot of the children of Israel there, in these countries. Mm -hmm. okay. Even many who do not know that they are the descendants from, uh, from Yaakov. They don't know. This is why Elohim is interested to show them his goodness. His goodness. Don't follow the evil of these people. Turn to me. And I will turn back to you. What do you mean the goodness you are talking? The goodness. How does Elohim show this goodness to the oh, yes. people I will in this show. area? On this. You know, once again, there is a problem because people... Because people think that the goodness of Elohim is represented by the big house, by the new cars, by the material belongings. But we know that it's only a futility. It is vanity. There is nothing, nothing of value. So, we have to understand that this goodness is shown by its protection. Protection. This is the greatest thing you can have on earth. Mm -hmm. Protection. Yeah. Protection from calamities. You don't mean that he will not uh, uh, spank you because it is written. The writer of the Hebrew uh, tells us that Jehovah, yeah, just like those he loves. Mm -hmm. So don't be disappointed if you are, if you get chastised. Okay? Sometimes we become um, wary. <laughs> yes, but this is this is our, our carnal nature, this is our natural nature. We have a tendency to worry for things which are not important. But if we fix our eyes on the Torah, we will not worry. We will not worry. 
Yeah. Because the promise are there. And the promise of, of uh, Elohim, as uh, uh, Apostle Charles say, they are yes and amen. So we don't have to worry. We have to tell the liars who speak to us to say, shut up, I don't believe your lies. My Elohim will provide all my needs. But not the needs I may, I may think it is, a new car or a new, uh, you know, a new uh, watch or new shoes. No, that's not the needs. We speak about that. Okay, we speak about to have food on your table, to have a shelter on your head, and to be of good health. This is how what I speak, not the material things. Mm -hmm. <laughs>